This video is going to help you prepare your files for the Responsive Accessible Portfolio assignment, uh, the first draft of which is due soon. So we want to get our files in place uh, so that we can begin working in them as soon as possible. Unlike uh, other videos uh, where you can watch and take notes or uh, as you as you like, uh, for this one I'd like you to work on this step by step with the video, pausing the video, completing the step, coming back, pausing it, and so on. Uh, that way you know that you're following along and completing each of the required steps. Uh, <clears throat> to complete, to prepare your files, excuse me, we're going to be using some templates which I have provided for you, which is going to require us to rename some of the old files and then to create some new ones uh, in brackets. Okay, uh, You're going to find the steps for this process that I'm going through on the Responsive Accessible Portfolio assignment page. Uh, this is of course linked to from the quick links uh, on every course page of the website as well as the major projects also in various places on the course calendar. So once you come to this page I'd like you to scroll down uh, to the preparing your files section. Uh, you might have looked at this in the past and there was no content there. I've recently added this content back in. Okay. Uh, so if we look through the eight steps uh, in this process you'll see that we're going to be saving our current HTML file as portfolio old. Uh, this will, will ensure that we're not deleting anything. We're just creating it as a new file. We're going to do the same thing uh, with our main old main.css. And then we're going to be creating some new portfolio and main CSS files based on some templates that I have provided for you. Um, so let's go ahead and, and do steps one and two since that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. We're just going to go and open up brackets okay? and it says to save the portfolio as and I'm going to have this in my web design folder and that's going to be called portfolio old uh, .html. Okay, and I'm going to save that and we'll see that now as portfolio old .html. Then I'm going to jump over to my main.css and I'm going to save that as main old.css. And notice I am in my styles folder, and you want to make sure that you are in your styles folder. Okay. All right. So now I have my index file, which I can just leave alone. I don't even need to have it open if I don't want it. Portfolio old.html and main old.css. Perfect. Now I'm going to jump back to Firefox and create a new file and save it as portfolio.html. Right. You can save over your portfolio.html file because you have a new portfolio old.html. Yes. So I'm going to go to back to brackets. I'm going to go file new. And I'm going to save this as in my web design folder, I'm going to save it as portfolio.html. And it must be this file, portfolio.html, all lowercase, spelled correctly with the lowercase extension. Save. Do I want to replace this? Yes, I want to replace it because I already have all the content that I made in that portfolio document as saved in portfolio old.html. So I don't have to worry that I'm losing any of my content. So I'm going to replace it. Very exciting. And as you can see, if I click on portfolio old, there it all is. All my old fun stuff that I was working on. And you should see the same thing on yours. Let's go back to Firefox. Click on the HTML template and copy that code into your new portfolio.html file. And I should say save it. So let's see, I'm going to right click on this, new tab, and I'm going to copy this comp right here. Copy. And I'm going to go to brackets. I'm in my portfolio and I'm going to paste it in there. And that is that. Save it. So it's all saved. Beautiful. 
Now you will notice in this file all sorts of very uh, new stuff, things that were not in the old, the old one. Uh, you'll remember when I said that there's going to eventually be a lot of stuff in this head area, and now we start to see that. Let me take you through this template very quickly. Here are some instructions uh, which, once you go through this process, you can then delete if you would like. Uh, this line, the first line here, doc type HTML, uh, this declares to the browser that it is an HTML5 document and it should treat it as, as such. Okay? And it needs to be there in order for it to be understood as an HTML5 document. So keep that there. HTML head, we're aware of that title. I'm going to change this to the Wolf Portfolio. Okay. This character set, it will render our um, English characters properly. This line here is when we is there so that when we start coding for phones and tablets, it treats pixels the way that we want it to treat pixels and not in some way that is defaulted on the phone. Okay. Um, and we are ensuring that it is the same across all phones and, and tablets. Okay. Uh, so that we have a, a, an expectation of how things are going to look. Uh, this here helps Internet Explorer 8 and above work with HTML5. Okay, it needs a, need a little help in that version. Uh, so this helps it work. Here is some notes to add your style sheet line, which we're going to do in a little bit. And then a little bit down below for our Google Fonts code, which we know we've uh, we've, we've, excuse me, which we've just been working with. Then we close our head, and then we have our body, and we're going to put in our content, and then the page will close. All right. So this is the uh, template that I provided for you. None of all this, this should, none of this should be deleted or removed. Okay. Um, we want to make sure that we are keeping that all in there. You can, of course, delete these sort of instructions uh, when you're ready. Okay, let's go back to the Firefox Developer Edition and see what it has to say in terms of our instructions. Create a new file and save it as main.css. Okay. Oh, and there's a typo here. I will fix that. So I'm going to do the same thing. Back to brackets. File new. File save as. And I'm going to put this in my styles folder, which is inside my web design folder. And I'm going to save it as main.css. It's going to ask me if I want to replace it. I'm going to say replace. And so now I have all my old style sheet stuff and my new style sheet right here. Back to Firefox. Okay, click on the CSS template and copy that code into your new CSS uh, file. All right. Copy that. Paste this into here. And I'm going to save it. All right. So this is our new CSS template, and it's going to look quite a bit different than the other one, which is basically just an empty document that we started putting code in. This has considerable more in there, and I'm going to go through and explain that in a little bit uh, when we start to see what is happening. Um, I'm actually going to move this up in the template before you get to here into this area here. So you'll see it up there. Okay. So now we have this all in here. Good. Now let's go back to our developer edition. Go back to our. Okay. 
open your old portfolio to HTML file and copy your content and your style sheet code into the new portfolio file. Make sure to put it in correct locations. Pay special attention to pasting into the head area, the, the portfolio uh, style sheet line and the Google Fonts line. Okay, so let's do that. So what we're doing now is we're going to be transferring from our portfolio old to the new portfolio document. And I'm going to start with my style sheet line. Copy that. And I'm going to replace this here because it's the same little thing. Paste it there. Boom. Now we'll know to go to look for main.css. And I'm going to take my Google Fonts code. Copy that. And I'm going to paste it below there. Um, perfect. I like things, as you know, I like things to be very organized. And uh, this will help ensure that it is. I like to have my Google Fonts in one area, my style sheet in one area. So that's all perfect, just like that. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to grab everything below the body tag. I don't want the body tag because the body tag is already here. I'm going to grab everything from this first section all the way down to the closing section, not taking the ending body tag. Copy. And I'm just going to paste it right into here. I'm going to delete this because I don't need it any longer. Paste it right in. So I have nice the way I like it. Good. Okay, so now I have my body. I've got all my code that was in there before. All my pictures, everything like that. Save. Beautiful. Okay, so this is my new portfolio.html file set up with the necessary HTML5 template and information. And that one is ready to go. Then I'm going to take my, go back to Firefox. And we're back here to our um, Firefox. And uh, I've added a new line, which somehow got deleted when I was making edits earlier. Uh, we're going to open our main old.css, and then you're going to copy your styling code into the computer section of your new main.css file. And I'm going to show you what that means uh, right now. So I'm going to go back to brackets and go to my main old, and I'm going to copy all this, okay, whatever I've got. I'm going to go to my main, and you will see down at line 42, or around there, at media screen and mid-width 1024 pixels computer wide screen view. This is called a media query. And what this does is that it allows the browser, sorry, to display code specific to a specific screen size. So here you'll see media screen, mobile phone, portrait view, tablet, portrait view, and computer, widescreen view. And since we're coding on our computer right now, we're going to be doing all of our styling down in this area here. So I'm going to paste this. Uh, but before I paste it in, I want to show you how these media queries are structured because it's somewhat confusing. You'll see that at media screen, minimum width 1024, and then there is a little curly brace right here. This curly brace connects to this little curly brace down here. Now, it would be wonderful if they decided, when they, whoever created this, if they used a square bracket to distinguish it from our regular curly braces. Uh, but they didn't do that. So we always need to be aware that after we have our closing curly brace from our regular code, there is this final curly brace right here uh, that needs to be there or things won't work. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to type in, let me bring this up a little so we can see it, just above it, you're going to do a slash caret 
I mean asterisks, all caps. Do not ever delete the below curly brace. Okay? And I'm going to paste in my content right above it. Okay? So do not ever delete the below curly brace. So what I know when I am coding that I will only be coding above here and I will not delete this curly brace. And I'm going to put a little code around here. Do not ever code below the above curly brace. Okay. So we we never want to delete this and we never want to code below it. Okay. Now I also want to paste this line of code, do not ever delete the below curly brace. I'm going to copy that and paste it here because this curly brace must always stay with the 768 MIDI query. And this, we're going to do it again on line 32, because this curly brace must stay with this media clip. All right. Now, I did not add this into the template so that you could do this yourself and figure out that these curly braces are necessary by writing this in. And this note, I'm telling you, is extremely important. Okay. Um, because if you start coding, if you start deleting this, things are just going to look all crazy like. Right. Okay, so let's save that now. All right. So we've now got in our computer widescreen view our code that we had put up coded before. We have our little notes about not deleting curly braces. And we've got some stuff up here, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. All right. So, and in our portfolio, we've got our style sheet and so on and so forth. So now we want to go to FileZilla. And we need to reconnect. So we'll find my public HTML, and as it says in the FileZilla, upload the new portfolio.html and upload the main.css. So I'm going to do that. Well, first, before I do that, I want to just bring back up my page to remember what it looks like here. Very exciting all spaces and stuff like that. And now I'm going to go back to I'm going to upload my portfolio.html. You'll notice I have the portfolio old there, so nothing is deleted. All right, yes. Upload my style sheet, boom. And now I am going to then refresh here. Whoa! Everything changed a little bit. I lost a lot of spacing. Okay. And you will lose that spacing too on your page. And that is perfectly okay. And the reason is, is that in our main.css now, we have something called a reset style sheet, which is in lines 8 through 14. What this reset style sheet does is it overrides all browser defaults for spacing and it gives you complete control over that spacing. So as you know that before when we were writing like a paragraph there would automatically be a space between your paragraphs. Um, that is now set to zero, zero space. So you're going to have to code all that in and I'm going to talk about doing that in another video. Um, but this reset style sheet 
gives the designer complete control over the design of all elements of their web page. Nothing is left to chance. Nothing is left to browser defaults or phone defaults or tablet defaults, which are widely different. And this gives you the ability to have your page display exactly as you want it to, regardless of the browser. And so that's why we get we see these little things are a little squished up, unlike they were before. There was more spacing because the browser was giving us that space. So good luck getting this all set up. If you have any questions, let me know. And I will see you in class. Have a great day.